What's good, y'all? Dr. Trey Hanna. Oh, have you ever experienced this point in life where you had that one friend? Let's say y'all both living y'all best life. You have a slice of apple pie, she has a slice of apple pie, or he has a slice of apple pie. The very next day, you gain two pounds, and the very next day, they don't gain nothing at all. <laughs> so today, what we're gonna talk about is what could possibly be the case, what's exactly happening right there, and why this all stems from childhood, and how you was raised, what type of environment you was in. Hey guys, my name is Michelle Anita, Peyton, Talia, Jazz, Marquita, I'm a physique. First things first, why this could be possible. The human body learns how to adapt to its own environment. The human body is the ultimate survival machine. It will do whatever it takes for it to survive. So for instance, if you look at a cross country runner, how do you look? They're very thin, they're very frail, they don't have a less muscle on their body. You know why? Because they taught their body, hey, we need to become more endurance based. The human body already knows in order to become more endurance based, we're gonna go ahead and lose more muscle because muscle weighs more than fat. But we need fat because we need some energy reserves just in case. Now think about a football player. They are more thicker or they're more curvier. Why? They're not doing a whole lot of running for a long amount of time. They're doing everything more explosive. That's why you see the average basketball player is leaner or smaller when it comes to muscle mass than the average football player. Football is more of an explosive sport. Basketball is more of an endurance based sport. You see? But when it's all sin and bun, your body doesn't know you're playing basketball or you're playing football. It doesn't know that. It just knows, hey, this is the environment that this person's putting me in. We're going to go ahead and adapt to it. When it comes to food, the same thing applies here. If you grew up in a household where your parents promoted, oh, you can't just drink juice all throughout the day and you're eating more whole foods, the children that come from this type of background actually are children who naturally are leaner throughout the rest of their life. A lot of kids that come from a background, such as myself, who their parents allowed them to have more processed foods, you're eating two or three bowls of cereal every single day, you're eating oatmeal before you leave out the house, you're drinking Hawaiian Punch and Capri Suns. We used to have Capri Suns packed. <laughs> Especially if you came in an African American household, you used to have Capri Suns packed up in your lunchbox, right? You're drinking these things, but all these things have high fructose corn syrup in it or sugar in it, all right? So is sugar the devil? No, it's how much sugar you have in that is the problem. Once again, too much of something is not good, too little of something is not good. You want to find the happy medium. That way, you're gonna comply to it and it's sustainable. When it comes to sugar, what's happening is when you're a child, your body, once again, doesn't need outside carbohydrates. You can go the rest of your life. You can give a, a newborn from birth till it dies. If it didn't have any carbs in it, you'll be fine because your body can actually stabilize its own source of glucose through a process called gluconeogenesis. You know, so you do not need carbs in your diet and you can still live perfectly fine. You just might want some carbs so it'll be easier for you to get your micronutrient goals. You know what I'm saying? And fiber, little things like that. This is better for your overall health. So you don't need carbs, it might be conducive for you to have a little bit of carbs in your diet. The better type of carbs. You have a carbs coming from broccoli. It's totally different if you have a carbs coming from cupcakes, okay? But when it comes to your body, your liver, adapts to his environment as well. So if you continue to give a little kid sugar, your body's really inefficient at first to have a lot of sugar, which means what? You have more of a leeway to have as much sugar as you want because your body can't really metabolize. It can't really do nothing with it. But if you continue to give your body sugar, your body's gonna get more efficient at metabolizing it, which means what? It's gonna be able to extrapolate more energy from this glucose that you continue to provide to it. So if you are a mom and you don't know too much about nutrition and you give me your kid oatmeal for breakfast with apples and their snacks is gushers and fruit roll-ups, then that kid is going to be cool for years, right? But you're going to see that you continue to do that and that's his main source of snacks. Your kid is going to metabolize it better and that's why you see a whole lot of fat ass or Excuse my French. <laughs> That's why I see a lot of kids start to become a little bit more obese for the age. Because their body became more efficient with metabolizing it. But it can't become more efficient with metabolizing it if you don't give it the sugar in the first place. You're giving your child some sugar here and there, it's cool. But if you're giving your child 
a whole diet of processed foods, you're setting them up for failure later down the road. These are going to be the kids or these are going to be the adults that have weight problems all throughout their life. Why? The human body gains the most amount of fat cells from 0 to 13. Which means what? From 0 to 13, based off the environment that this kid is in, it's going to literally dictate if they're going to have weight problems or not. You know, because if you create more of your fat cells from zero to 13, so let's say you have 10 million fat cells compared to somebody who didn't grow up in an environment where we actually didn't have a lot of processed foods, they were drinking more water, their parents was actually creating their foods, they wasn't eating Lucky Charms for breakfast, then let's say they have 4 million fat cells. That means in theory, it's going to be harder for this person with 4 million fat cells to gain weight at the same pace as somebody who has 10 million fat cells. Okay? So... That's why I literally strive and try to teach women, or majority mothers, how to eat right. Because in theory, if you eat right and you're the mom, who makes the majority of the meals in the house? Ma. So now your whole family's eating right. Now your kids is eating right. And because your kids are eating right and your kids is growing up in an environment where they naturally see diet ocean spray. They probably don't understand it, but they see diet ocean spray, right? And they see low carb snacks, less sugary snacks. They're going to start favoring these things. And because they start favoring these things, because that's what they naturally grew up with, they're not going to have weight problems when they get older. You know? Hopefully, y'all learned something today. That's why I want you to go ahead and make sure you change up your diet and make sure you don't have as much as processed foods. Because if you're somebody who has weight problems now, it's probably because you had weight problems when you were younger. So let's make sure we kill the generational curse and fix the underlying issue, which is food processed foods cool you're not going to see somebody getting insulin resistant or diabetic because they ate too much brussels sprouts or green beans but you might see somebody that become more insulin resistant or diabetic because they eat a whole lot of potatoes cool hope y'all learned something today that should be the tip of the day that's going to help you stay snatched all the time learn sometime talk to you soon